uh, I'm Jessica Denholm and uh, Vice President at Family Services of Greater Vancouver. Um, and currently, um, my position within the organization is largely administrative. So I oversee um, risk management and privacy and accreditation, um, contract management, um, and also have as part of that portfolio uh, facilities and, of course, information technology. Uh, and so that's where um, my connection with uh, F12 comes in. How has, in a very general term, how has the pandemic impacted the organization? Uh, well, we we deliver crucial so social services to uh, different populations across Vancouver. And so, you know, we're talking about um, youth homelessness and uh, people who are experiencing um, intimate partner violence and families that are uh, challenged uh, with parenting and um, uh, addiction and just a whole host of, of social challenges. So um, we've got programs that are, like I said, uh, span across the lower mainland. And so part of Part of what our challenge is is, you know, one, how do we continue to deliver those really crucial services to the people who probably need them more now than ever? And how do we stay connected? And then, of course, the challenge is, is well, then how do we continue to deliver those services in this new way of, of service delivery, right, which is now often virtual um, and remote? Um, certainly, we have uh, some essential services that are on the ground that are still running and operating. We have residential services and um, and drop-in for our youth. Um, but we've had to adapt to a, a new way or to find different and alternative ways to deliver the same services to our clients, right, who are probably really relying on us now more than ever. Interesting. Uh, and have you seen any specific impacts to um, uh, fundraising or anything on that, on that side of the business external from kind of the services that you provide? Yeah, we have, we have a fantastic director of fund development and of course, certainly challenged by what's going on, right? I mean, you're not holding traditional fund development or, or fundraising events in the way that we would normally think of them as. So everybody's had to come up with creative and really super innovative ways to, to reach the larger community in terms of its support to family services. So, um, she's working super hard and, uh, and trying to make those connections, um, to the larger donor community and, um, you know, whether it's grant writing or whatever, but again, trying to find different and, and new and creative ways to, to, um, to, to access donors and support. Yeah, I, I, I imagine creativity is key uh, right now in, in that role. And, and I, I'm uh, personally looking forward to seeing kind of what comes out of it because there's, there's gotta be some, some things that will stick, I imagine. Yeah, yeah, we were just uh, we were just throwing around some ideas the other day. Like, you know, normally if we would have like we were thinking about, um, you know, you know, people getting out and doing their own um, family picnics in the park, right, in support of of, of um, supporting families, but having people sort of you know go out and and have a family picnic in a park and and take a video or pictures and send them in and have have us have it be or try to find a way of all of us staying connected, but doing it in, of course, our uh, social distancing and safe social distancing and and uh, trying to stay connected that way. So, yeah, there's just lots of creative things that are being thrown around right now, for sure. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, before the pandemic, how did you approach work from home? What, what, what has the transformation looked like for you if there's maybe one or two things that you think are pertinent to highlight? Um, well, certainly, certainly, uh, access to information when we need it and in a consistent way, right. Um, and, and, and in a readily available way, um, which entailed, uh, you know, prior to us moving to our remote work environments, which, which was probably the week of, I want to say the week of March, the, uh, probably the week of March the 16th is really when we went full tilt. Um, so prior to that, it was fantastic working with Darren um, and having him kind of, you know, 
moving everything to SharePoint for us and getting us off of and give, giving and enhancing our VPN access and all that stuff just so that departments like finance and HR um, could access their databases or they could have everything they needed um, to run those departments smoothly needed to be really essentially at their fingertips in their homes. And so that was done. We actually, they, they were, Darren was fantastic in terms of getting that um, figured out for us and planned. And so really by the time that week did, did, uh, did arrive and we were all really in our homes at that point, um, for the most part, things were, were, uh, were, were readily accessible, which was exactly what we needed. And then of course there was a, the other uh, huge shift for us, not from the administrative point of view, but again, to the direct service delivery was how do we stay connected with clients? And so of course this big um, undertaking was how do we, you know, how do we do telephone counseling with clients? How do we do video conferencing? That was a huge piece of work right. that, that Darren undertook with us. So how to find the right platform, which was the best one in terms of our requirements, in terms of privacy, um, which, which ones were most user friendly, and then being able to, to, um, to provide those to clients and, and stay connected. It, it will be interesting, I think, to see if the experience and, and the changes kind of will permanently um, affect how businesses operate, like will there be lasting changes? Are there changes in, in your organization that you foresee uh, maybe being adopted long-term? Well, I think we are. I think, I think part of this has been, um, it's been an interesting, I mean, certainly we, we wouldn't wish a pandemic on anybody, but it certainly has yeah. been a, an opportunity, right? For us to, to have a relook at, how we can do our work again both administration and frontline in new and different ways and how what are some of the things that are more efficient now you know clearly um there are some things that that are um and i'm i wouldn't be surprised if as i, I was just finishing telling you that remote work wasn't really necessarily a part of our regularized work environment but I think what will happen is we will maybe move to that. It may be that you're in the office three days a week and you're working from home two days a week um, because everything I can do now, essentially, really, that I used to be able to do just from the office, I can do now from home. So, um, and, and then the pieces around service delivery, while it is hard to imagine that in-person um, meetings would ever be, you know, eclipsed by just having a virtual environment because there's so much that happens in a in a in a in office environment that's really rich. I think there is some considerations to be made about how we can deliver services to people who might not otherwise want to go into an office, right? Or might feel unsafe about leaving their home or so I think I think that there's a niche there for sure. Interesting. How would, um, uh, well, let me preface this by asking, did you ever provide um, services to members um, you know, remotely, like through phone or, or through video um, that you also provide in person, like counseling and things like that? Yeah, I mean, we've had, um, again, not in any sort of um, intentional way of service delivery. I mean, we have an, we have an EAP program um, that does, that has provided in the past um, uh, sessional counseling uh, um, or video counseling, right? Um, but certainly we're doing obviously all of it now that way. Um, and lots of um, uh, e-communications e through, you know, text. Uh, certainly our victim services workers, so these are workers, uh, support workers who work largely uh, with women who, um, who are experiencing um, intimate partner violence, uh, their, their main mode of communication is often through uh, texting through their phones. Not, not, certainly not exclusively, but a lot of it through that, that medium. And, um, and so parts of the work have been, 
outside of the in-person exchange, but um, but I think that, like I said, I think this has provided an opportunity to be uh, an opportunity for us to be able to maybe tap into a certain client population that actually might find this way of communicating more desirable. Fascinating, mm -hmm. really fascinating. Uh, have, have you, in dealing with your multiple vendors and uh, you know even the the public. Uh, media, all the different kind of external stakeholders. Is there anything you've come across that has been kind of notable in terms of flexibility or, or resources, things like that, that have been helpful? Certainly, yeah. Uh, there's been lots of media coverage and support for certainly nonprofits that are still delivering essential services, right? Those frontline services. Um, that's been there for sure. Our funders have said to us um, uh, both. Um, um, our, our larger government funders, both MCFD and MPSSG, have both said to us, um, let us know um, what enhancements you've had to make in order to provide, alter like, pro provide alternate ways of delivering service to clients. If those have incurred additional costs as a result, you know, whether it's having to get licenses for, you know, video conferencing platforms or um, peripheral equipment, you know, and my headset or whatever it might be, a laptop um, for somebody who might, you know, maybe work off of their phone largely for uh, uh, their service day. They have said, you know, let us know, can't promise you anything, but we'd be interested in having you track those costs. Maybe there are grants that we can, we can, um, we can send your way. Um, so there's been that flexibility for sure. Um, and again, I think service providers and partners that work with us in, in delivering um, some of our programming have been pretty collaborative about, you know, how to get, how to, you know, whether it's a video conference, you know, platform choice or whatever it might be, um, have been pretty, I think everybody, like I said, I think everybody's trying to figure out the best way to do their work. Um, and I think there seems to be more of a, a more of a reason to actually have to work more collaboratively with with each other. I think we're forced to be that way, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I would agree. I'm I'm getting to know more of my colleagues across the nation <laughs> than I ever did before, which is really sure. cool. Yeah. You know? For sure, right? Really I neat. know. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah, sweet. we were we were more we were more um prone prior to the pandemic to pick up the phone and have telephone conversations as opposed to say a Teams meeting now. So you're right. It's like for the first time you get to see someone's face that you've been talking to for like a year or two. So it is it is interesting. And 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 more than that, you get to see what their house looks like. <laughs> I know. I know. There's an I don't know if you ever see this, but there's this chart on Zoom and it's like um, the percentage of time that you spend focusing on different things. And I think it says like 50 to 20 percent is is focused on what <laughs> the information that you're gleaming from the room that the person's sitting in and I yeah so I totally I totally get that uh that's hilarious uh that's a good segue into the next topic of communication communication is something uh I think a lot of organizations are doubling down on um with all the different the different kind of groups whether it's you know um the service the the, the kind of the end user of your services your clients your members uh, your internal uh, staff, management team, and then you know suppliers as well, uh, or vendors. What, how are you communicating, or, or, or how is the organization communicating um, through the crisis? Uh, you're absolutely right. So I think there's been an in. So not only is the quality of the communication different, i.e., you know, phone or email or text versus now a Teams meeting where you're actually, you know, seeing somebody face to face. So certainly that has changed. Um, and 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 we have decided um, within Family Services that we will use. Um, teams as, as the primary way that we communicate. So I think people's calendars are 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 filled with. Um, you know, even just these 10 or 15 minute calls. Um, and, and so there's, and, and then of course there's the volume. I think that, um, I think because we're feeling that we're all working, well, we are working remotely, but we're all working in these, uh, you know, again, spread out all over the lower mainland, um, really more of a motivation and impetus to ensure that we're, we're, we're sort of even over communicating. We're just meeting more often. Um, um, I, I think there's, you know, 
I think one of the things I've learned is um, how much, and this, this I, I guess would speak to the value of actually being in office, but a lot is actually decided through informal channels as you pass people by in a hallway at work, right? Like there's, there's stuff that goes on every day when you're working in an office. And so when you're working remotely, you have to be way more intentional about that now, right? So if, if I, I, don't, I don't have the opportunity to see, you know, Joe across the hallway, um, I've got to make you know, a deliberate attempt to reach out to him. And so I think all of us are experiencing that. I think that's part of the busyness, the additional busyness we're all feeling is, um, is, is just that. And so that's been a, that's been a, a real sort of learning for me over these last four or five weeks. Um, and uh, I would just say again, just to, to, I think I've emphasized this already is that we're, I think we're just being more intentional now about, the amount of communication we're doing, whether it's through email or picking up the phone or FaceTiming with somebody or through Teams, um, certainly is, has been obviously has increased for sure. That's really fascinating what you shared about the idea of, of not having those kind of micro moments uh, in passing. That's the first I've heard of that. And it makes a lot of sense. And I'm just thinking about it as you were talking. Uh, there, there are a lot of things that happen and decisions that get made yeah. just in passing. Absolutely. Yeah. Like at the, in the lunchroom, what have you. Right. And um, I, I think probably for different reasons. And, and, you know, one of the challenging things may be for people to reach out to, you know, management or people that maybe they see as being a, a level above them, because sometimes it's easier to have those conversations and get an update yes. or, or make a decision when you're just passing them the hallway. Yep. Right. Rather than yeah. saying, I'm going to go and interrupt that person and, and call them. Right? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. That's, mm -hmm. that's fascinating. Fantastic. Well, Jessica, thanks so much for your time. You're very welcome. Yeah. And I wish, wish you health and, and uh, all of us a quick recovery to normal. No kidding. Yeah. Yeah. Cheers. Yeah. Be well. Take care. Take care. Bye-bye now. Okay. Bye-bye.